<laughs> Our guest in this first segment uh, knows a bit about stress uh, because she helps young people get into college. Uh, the college lady, Diane Kielholz. Good morning, Dee. How are you? Good morning, everybody. How are you? Um, I've had days, I, I've had nights where I haven't slept well, so I empathize with you. Um, counting sheep doesn't work, but lying there doesn't work either. Nothing So, um, you know, maybe getting up and, I don't know, maybe getting up and having a cup of tea and then going back to bed might help. Or, 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 Reading or a good book. Work. Reading a good book is <laughs> Yeah, helpful. reading a good book, yes. Um, maybe a glass of warm milk. My, that's what my husband uses, so. <laughs> well, they, more milk used to be the thing, right? That's yes, what they would tell you did. to do. Yes. So, you know. And it, it, it helped. I worked for my husband, so yes. All right. I take, you know, I started taking uh, melatonin, about five milligrams of mm -hmm. melatonin about 10 years ago, and that really works. Because I, I used to have the John Doyle syndrome where I'd go to sleep and I'd just sit in that bed and like, oh, my goodness, when is this sleep thing going to come? I, like, my wife can fall asleep anywhere at any time after like 8.30. Uh -huh. She can just, uh -huh. and she's gone. And I was so envious of that. Yeah, but the uh, melatonin has really helped. See, I couldn't do what you do, Rob. With the what do you get up at three twenty, three forty in the morning, whatever three three twenty, three twenty. If I have an early thing to do, if they, I got a flight, I've got to catch or whatever, so I've, I got to get up at, at five for oh, that. Oh, you get all keyed up. Oh my God, I wake up at one and then at one twenty yeah. and then two fifteen, <laughs> and it, it just it's it's I, having that kind of pressure. It, yeah, it, it'll be difficult. Yeah, I recommend uh, alcohol, plenty of it. That'll help you right out. Okay, well. But melatonin also does work. Melatonin yeah. does work, yes. Well, I'll think yes. about that. Yeah, try it. Five milligrams. Yeah. 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 Give it a shot. Every night before you go to bed, within a half an hour of bedtime, five milligrams. Just it, get it, the it, dissolvable uh -huh. kind. No, I, uh, this is how unaware I am of, of the rules. Is that prescription only or is that over the counter? You get it right over the counter. No kidding. Right, right. over the counter. As okay. You, as you get older, you don't produce as much melatonin. Aha. So that's why sometimes it's more difficult to get to sleep. But the really good stuff comes from a guy on the corner. <laughs> <laughs> what out here at the end of, yeah. of, of the lane yeah. on, on, yeah. Uh, on, on Eagle School Road. <laughs> Lady Di, let's talk about school because uh, for those entering their senior year, this is mm -hmm. the last shot at high school and a chance to get in uh, to college. Uh, first and foremost, can you tell me, as, as your business, you've been doing this for about 10 years, if I recall. Uh, are, right. Are there fewer kids going to college now? Because the colleges in West Virginia, at least routinely, are reporting a drop in enrollment from pre-COVID days. I think I think COVID, um, I don't think, I know. COVID did, um, did decrease the amount of enrollment, not just in West Virginia colleges, but across the country by about 10%. Um, and the question has always been, okay, so, you know, why and what's happened to those students? Um, I also do believe in talking to my colleagues that work on the high school side that um, there are some students who just never came back from COVID and the question is what happened to them? Um, so I do think that there's about a 10% drop in numbers. But from my perspective, the numbers, I mean, I, I, the, my phone is still ringing. Thank, thank you, Lord. Um, and, um, you know, there's still lots of people interested in college um, and wanting some support in going to college. And, and that 10%, that would be an overall average. Is that right? That's correct. Thanks. It's an overall average. Yeah. It definitely is, yes. So is this a temporary blip, or is this a sea change in the way that young people and their parents are looking at a college education? I, I, you know, I, I hate to say that I think it might, but I think it might be a sea change. I think that, um, and this is just my opinion, but I do believe that with the recent um, rulings from the Supreme Court um, and also – you know, the fact that colleges have, have increased their requirements. They initially did that during COVID because many students, many, many students could not get, um, weren't, weren't able to take an SAT or an ACT because there just weren't people available. Pe there weren't adults available to proctor them. Um, and so 
They Some students, I mean, I had students who drove to South Carolina. One flew up to New York City so that they could take the test. So if, if parents had money and resources, then they could send them up there on a short moment's notice. Um, they were able to take the test, but many students didn't get the test. So the majority of colleges in this country are now what we call test optional. But uh, don't be fooled by those by those two words, test optional. Um, in 2023, for every three students who submitted a college application and got in, two students took the test and submitted it, and one student didn't. So it, it's Right now, I believe it's more a perception issue uh, among the colleges about the about the testing, and the perception is, well, if they didn't submit the test scores, then they probably weren't good, and they, therefore they might not do well in our school, so therefore we're going to deny them. So working, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, John. No. Uh, working with the 10% number, just we'll stipulate that that's, that's the number. What percentage within that do you think are people who have decided that, I don't need college. I don't want college. I want to pursue something that doesn't require a, a degree versus folks who wish they could go to college, but, but can't. Right. Um, well, I would be speculating, but I, I believe a higher percentage are those who have said, okay, college just isn't, isn't in my future. See, I, um, I think that, that's kind of a net this, good thing. You think? I do, because I think there are a lot of folks who go to college who, and who don't, they go because it's the next thing to do. They don't really know what mm -hmm. they want to do with their lives. I'm mm -hmm. a big proponent of taking mm -hmm. that year off to figure out, you know, what's, of course, my kid's already out of that, so I don't have to have to worry about it. But, um, you know, we, we need the, I think we need to start pushing the trades more than we have in the, in the past. I, I a thousand percent agree with you. You know, um, I'm in the, I'm, you know, I was a public high school counselor, so I worked with students, whether they, were were telling me they were college bound or not and of the children that i've raised of the four children i raised two of them are in the trades um and it was difficult for my youngest son to get in the trades because um well as his mother he was stubborn so he wasn't going to listen to anything <laughs> his mother said um but he's now a master electrician and i'm very proud of that and he found his way to that but it wasn't easy um, I definitely believe we need to um, increase, we need to talk to the students about um, options, and we need to talk to parents about options, and we need to talk to, I think we need to educate the parents as much as the students, because I think the parents think, and I think this is, they're just thinking this, this is like rote, this is just something that they think, okay, I have to do this. Um, I want my kid to be successful. I want them to be happy. I don't want them living in my basement. Um, I want them here, to here. be successful. Yes. <laughs> exactly. I don't, exactly. I, and this is John Doyle, uh, Diane. I, I'm reluctant to get on board with pushing anybody in any direction. I, will I am accept, too, John. Yeah, uh, I will accept that over a period of probably 30 years, beginning in the 1960s, we had – we got the attitude that almost everybody ought to go to college. And we and I we probably pushed people in the direction of college that would have been better off and happier had they gone into the trades. I now sense it's going in the opposite direction a bit too much. Uh, that that uh, there are too many people uh, who are saying to kids, oh, don't go to college, don't go to college, go to trade school, go to trade school. And the trick is to figure out for each person which is the better course of action. And, and, and in terms of uh, there's another option I would I think that, that, that is, is, is viable for a whole lot of people, and that's the military. Because you can mm -hmm. get a combination of both if you go into the military. Mm -hmm. It, but uh -huh. Lady, Lady Di, isn't that where the guidance counselor used to come in? Yes. Um, speaking as a former guidance counselor, um, so I'll put that hat on for a second. What I can say to you, and uh, listen, I understand about the 60s because, uh, you know, I, I've seen the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So I understand what you're saying, John. And I, I, what started happening in high schools probably in the early 80s is um, – High schools did hire more guidance counselors. That was a good thing. 
but they put more and more responsibility on them, and they also increased their caseloads so that a lot of times their caseloads were well over 500 students. And I, I live that that experience, and so I know what that's all that's like, and it's difficult. It's very difficult to really provide for the needs of 500 students in a year. And this, and as students go through high school and they get into their junior year of high school, this, this becomes really critical and really important, this conversation of where you're going to go and, um, or what do you want to do with your life? Not, not necessarily where you're going to go. Erase that sentence from what I just said. But more importantly, so what do you think you want to do with your life? And usually it's the first time a student's been asked that question. And um, I agree with you that at 16 and 17 year olds, that's a tough question to ask and to answer for the student. They don't know. So, and and students mature at different levels. Um, you know, so some students at 16 do. They they're very clear what they want to do, and um, and so all they basically need is some direction and how to get there. But there are a lot of students who just don't know. So I think I think public service is should be something that in this country that we increase. Um, I was lucky enough when I went to school, I went to school to become a special education teacher, and I graduated from Hood College in 1984, and I'm very proud of that fact. Um, and when I went to school, I was offered the opportunity to take out a loan called a National Defense Student Loan. We don't have them anymore. Um, and what I was basically told is, okay, you're going to take out this money, and this is going to help pay for your tuition. Um, and and then what you need to do is get a job as a special education teacher. And for every year, up to eight years, that you work in special education, and I had to jump through some hoops as far as paperwork, both at the beginning of the school year and at the end of the school year, we'll forgive a portion of your loan until it's paid off. I think something like that would be a great incentive for some kids and for some parents. Well, Diane, why was, it, well, why was that discontinued? Do you know? Uh, Congress did it, and I, I, I won't ever presume to understand why Congress did <laughs> Well, it. I was wondering if it might have been during the time after the Berlin Wall came down and everybody began talking about the so-called peace dividend, so we wouldn't have to spend so much more money on military stuff, and that mm -hmm. maybe this per was perhaps one of the casualties. Mm-hmm. It might have been. Okay. I know that I know that this was presented to me only because I was going into special education, mm -hmm. and at yeah. that time there was a, I mean the the law that that um, brought forward special education into the schools had had been passed like 10, 10, 15 years before. And there was a real need in the country for special education teachers, certified special education teachers. So um, so because I was going into that field working with that public, that this was an opportunity for me. But I think, I, you know, I think that we can look around. We don't have to look very far and we can find lots of other opportunities. So, and I definitely agree with you that I think that the military would be a great option for students. The military ha is really good at uh, determining a student's strengths and talents and also what the military needs. They're That's really right. good at that. That's right. Um, yeah, they are. And, but at the end, at the same time, they don't take every student. I have a student um, that that is going to be going to Maryland in three weeks, and um, she wanted, in the worst way, to go into the military, um, like through the um, the guard. And um, part of her reason for wanting that was she was mad at mom and dad and wasn't going to take any money from them. That's over. But um, but she really wanted to do that. I mean, and she still wants to do that. And the military, she got tested. They did a physical. And she'd had an injury several years ago, and the military said, "I don't think so." Um, and she, this is student, was a 4.0. I mean, academically, she was like gold on paper, but um, there was something, you know, there was something. Phys I think she had a knee surgery, and 
it still wasn't a hundred percent, but the physical is what had them say no to her, which which she wasn't happy about at all. She was devastated. But um, but I think that I I'm a strong believer in public service. I mean, it certainly helped me, and I think that it would really help a lot of other students, and it would help a lot of parents who would, who are looking at a um, and Rob can speak to this who are looking at you know paying for college for their child and looking at a pretty large bill. Um, it might help if the, if they knew that some of that money would be not necessarily forgiven, but would be uh, well, th- there would are, be paid for by public service. There are still provisions in place if you go to work for a nonprofit or for government yeah. uh, for mm-hmm. uh, relief from student loan debt. It's uh, partial forgiveness if you work uh, ten years. I think is what the limit is. <laughs> Uh, the time frame is right now. Di, as we mm-hmm. approach this new school year, what should rising seniors have done over the summer and what should they be doing during the first part of the school year if they plan on going to a uh, college? So today is a perfect day for me to be talking because today is October the 1st. And the Common App, which is the application that most students use to apply to all the colleges they want to apply to, just went live this morning so they can go in and they can create um, a common app account that's all i need to say they know more about that than i do and um and begin to to fill out the common app what i would say is they need to take their time filling it out and they need to fill out every single solitary box um you don't want to leave anything blank Um, and the other thing that they should be doing if they haven't already done so is look at what the essay prompts are for the one essay that they have to do for the Common App, which is 650 words. The prompts are, all you have to do is Google Common App prompts and they'll come up and they need to start thinking about what they're gonna write. And they've got some time before school starts, not much, but they've got some time before school starts. And um, it would be a good time now for them to kind of work on their essay. Um, the essay needs to be, it needs to basically tell a little bit about themselves, um, maybe a story about something that happened to them. And then it also needs to be self-reflective and that it lets the college admissions folks know what they've learned about themselves as a result of whatever the experience is. So, 50 words, um, is, that, is that minimum or maximum? 650 words is max. Max, thank you. Max. That, and they should write, I mean, I I have had some students who say, well, the minimum is 250, therefore I'm only going to write 250. No, <laughs> no, don't do that. Um, try to get between like 525 and 650, but 650 is max. And kids, remember, that, there's no such thing as a good adverb. So <laughs> keep those that's out. Exactly that right. is correct. <laughs> um, Spoken like a writer. When I was... Uh, I got a college in, in 1979 and then I got a job and part of the the job benefits was the employer after I think after a year maybe it was after 2 years they would pay for my graduate degree and yes. is that still common do we still see employers with the benefit of providing education No not as much not as much anymore unfortunately Well that's a show so um it is a shame. It is a shame. Yeah. yeah. If, um, if, if we've still got time, I was hoping, uh, Diane, to talk about one other issue with you before you left, and that is yeah. the decision of the West Virginia Higher Education Policy Commission to uh, 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 revoke the charter, I guess is the way you put it, of Alderson Broadus College uh, as of December 31st. Are you familiar with that, Diane? Uh no, I'm not. I, I, my first question was, why would they do something like that? Well, Alderson Broadus has been in serious financial difficulties for okay. a number of years, and things are getting worse and worse. The school only has about 400 students. It's a private school uh, yeah. in, in Philippi. And, and uh, uh, I th- think what they decided is that those people who, who plan to graduate by December 31st, can go back to Alderson Broadus this fall and finish up and graduate, but they are not permitted to take any new students in. And after December 31st, they have to close their doors. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, you know, um, what I, there's, there are a lot, there are lots of schools around the country that, well, not a lot, but there's some schools around the country that are having issues as Alderson brought us is having, um, this issue. And, um, one of the things that a lot of the schools have done is they've, they've kind of, another school has come forward and said, we will, you know, we will take you on and you'll become, for example, like Alderson brought us at, at West Virginia University so that the school, the foundation of the school can still be intact and students can still benefit from it. Um, so I, I, I mean, I have heard of some schools that have, that have closed their doors, like this school is going to close their doors. And it's, it's, it's really, I mean, I think it's sad. Um, I doubt if a, I doubt if a public university would take over a school like this. My theory is that maybe Davis and Elkins uh, college in, in nearby Elkins, about 20 miles away, uh, which does appear to be healthy, might be able to absorb those students. Right. And I think anything that can be done to, you know, support the students that are not seniors um, or maybe need another semester besides fall semester of 2023, um, you know, without them, without it costing the student any more money than they're already paying, I think that should definitely be something that's done. Diane, is there a clearinghouse, a place that kids can visit that will list the, the broadest number of scholarships and grants, not loans, that, um, that, Kids can qualify for different things for, for so yeah, financing. there's two of them. There's scholarships.com, and then there's FastWeb, F-A-S-T-W-E-B, all one word. Um, and if you go on both of those websites, you create an account. Um, and then what I have said to students over the years um, is you also want to create a separate email account and use that separate email account for both of scholarships.com and fast web because you'll start being inundated with scholarship opportunities. Um, and some of them are, you know, some of them, I mean, I, they're all valid. Um, but some of them, they look more like contests and scholarships. I would avoid those. Um, and then you just kind of go through them and pick out the ones that fit with, um, who you are as a student, maybe also what you want to study. Um, or anything else, any other qualifier that you think, oh, this is really good. I'd like to apply to this one. And then create your own timeline. So to make, pay attention to the deadlines and create a 12-month timeline for yourself because you can apply to colleges every month of the year. Do and I have- you can apply to colleges once you've graduated high school throughout your four years of college. How can people find out more about the services you provide, Di? My web, my um, business is called Launching College Success. Um, so just just Google that, Launching College Success, and um, you'll find my my phone number is two four zero two eight five nineteen twenty, and um, you can find my email information there. And um, please give me a call. I'm more than willing to sit and talk to you, um, even if you just have a few questions. Just give me a call. I'm more than willing to help. Di, always good to talk with you. Thank you so much. Always good. Thank you. Thanks for asking. And you guys have a great day. Bye, John and John. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Our producer, Dylan Bishop, says West Virginia Wesleyan has said they would take on AB students. Uh, They're pretty close, too. So, yeah. Yeah. Dylan's a pretty good producer. He finds information like this. I think that's wonderful. If I'm smart, I check my phone during interviews because he sends me stuff. Sometimes I don't see it till too late, though. But thank you, Dylan. Appreciate it. 832.